The engines powering Yelp's review filter and much of the internet are a series of algorithms. So what exactly is an algorithm? We asked Basit Chaudhry, one of the IBM researchers who helped create Watson, that supercomputer that competed on Jeopardy. You know, there's algorithms all around us, really, and we use them in our day-to-day -day lives all the time. Uh, and a, a really sort of uh, major set of these that everyone has experienced with are recipes. A recipe is an yes. algorithm. Um, let's take, for, for example, pasta, how to make pasta. It's really simple. Take a pot of a certain size, fill it with water, put it on stove, have water boil, put pasta in, um, and then taste the pasta until it's relatively tender to the tooth, uh, but not soft. That's just a series of instructions. You one can hardly by fit that on the box. It's so complicated. Exactly, yeah. So, and, that, and that's the thing for any procedure. Once you start breaking it down into individual steps, it can be quite, quite complicated. Um, and quite long, but this is why um, computers are so good at these things. Because one of the challenges seems to be, if an, if an algorithm is like a recipe, the food you end up with is only going to be as good as the instructions. And it's simple to make pasta, but when you get into these unbelievably complicated things, there seems to be this, this room for, for error or misunderstanding. Or right, so a, a good example of this is, is playing chess. So if you look at chess, the number of games of chess that you can actually play, there's more games of potential chess than there are atoms in the universe, or in the known universe. That seems impossible. <clears throat> it does, but this is a, a kind of thing that's happening more and more in, in society. We're trying to solve problems where you can combine individual elements, and just the number of combinations is so massive, it's difficult to think about. So take rush hour traffic, right? There's you know, thousands to tens of thousands to millions of cars on a certain number of streets all interacting together. Now, if you were to just try to th look at them and think about them, it's pretty hard to derive any kind of pattern from that, right? Just as a person, you can't fit it all in your mind. But one of the really interesting uh, applications of algorithms that were really being developed now is how do we understand traffic patterns and how do we uh, improve how traffic flows go just by gaining data on how streets are used. Um, so that's like, it's, it's, it's very complicated because there's always interacting parts, but again, computers are really quite good at that. Um, a really good example of this is something where we're working on that's, that's fun and, and very interesting, very challenging. Um, we're looking at trying to understand how you can invent new kinds of recipes. Hmm. So it's a, it's a really fun project. Like literally food recipes? Yes. Yeah. We're looking at, we're trying to discover how you can create novel combinations of flavors by combining ingredients. So, for instance, you know, one of the things, we, you know, a sim simple recipe we worked on was blue cheese and chocolate. Huh. This was something that the computer just generated completely on its own. Um, and there's going to be many, many more of these things. So there, there's different ways uh, of combining flavors that people probably have never even imagined that, you know, the computer is now working on. And you could also imagine the computer making some really disgusting stuff in the end. There's invariably going to be a lot of awful meals created. <laughs> but over time, because you can keep repeating this and the computer can keep churning through the data, if it comes up with a combination that's bad, as long as you let it know it's bad, you know, it'll quote unquote learn something. And can you think of any examples of kind of algorithms gone bad and what we learn from these mistakes? Like when, when there's a problem, what tends to cause that problem? Yeah, so in a sense, because we're trying to tackle these more and more complicated problems, in a sense, when we get answers back from them, it can be a challenge to interpret the answers and make sure they're correct. Right? So anytime we analyze some kind of data, we bring certain assumptions to it. Right? And if those assumptions are off, um, we'll get answers back, but they're not necessarily the answers we need or what we're looking for. So I think that that's a really big challenge. And I think we saw part of that with some of the things that happened um, over the past few years, say, in finance. Right? People we, made assumptions about what the market could do. Yeah, exactly. And then, obviously, once you translate those assumptions into a piece of software and algorithm, it's going to give you an answer. But it's always going to be up to people to interpret those answers. And that's really, I think, where a lot of the challenge still lies. That's all for us for tonight. We will fold things up. Hope to see you back here tomorrow.